All right, well, more on this. So we've got Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com and Fox News contributor, and Kevin Walling, a Democratic strategist and a director at DS Political. Guy, I'll go to you first. Uh, let's first uh, go to this conflicting message on Russia uh, coming from the White House. The Treasury says it's going to allow these uh, certain transactions with the Russian Federal Security Service, and then Sean Spicer at the White House briefing, which you and I watched together on Outnumbered, said that's not the case. So what, it, what it's tough to decipher what is it? Yeah, and that's I think the subject or ought to be the subject of more questions because I think given what we've seen from the Russians and their conduct over the last year in particular and their attempts to meddle in our election, this is not the time to be loosening anything when it comes to restrictions on especially the FSB of all people. So the administration says no change in policy, no real loosening. Treasury's memo seems to tell a different story. I think this is absolutely grounds for more questions from the press corps, and I hope the White House can shed more light on this and sort of explain uh, and try to reconcile these two apparently opposing viewpoints. Kevin, your thoughts on what you heard today? Well, I absolutely agree with Guy. I mean, this is a dangerous thing that we're seeing coming out from the White House. Uh, either they're totally not on the same page with their Treasury Department, uh, or they're going at it alone. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of concerns. Uh, Senator Graham of South Carolina was discussing those earlier. Uh, has concerns about Russia's meddling in this election. The fact that we don't have those answers, but we're releasing or, or, or loosening some of these uh, sanctions is a very dangerous play by the White House. And I know, Guy, you've got some strong thoughts on what you just heard about the com phone conversation that took place with the Australian Prime Minister. There was lots of questions surrounding that, too. Uh, John Roberts just said that it was described as a frank conversation by the White House. Um, Donald Trump, as you said, it's, uh, uh, said it himself. He's having tough calls with these world leaders, but specifically this one, allowing the refugee deal with extreme vetting. Your thoughts? Well, I'm sure that he is frustrated and look, keep, try to put yourself in Trump's shoes. You come into office, one of your big issues on the campaign trail involves refugees. It's a tough national security quandary. And you have this conversation with a, a big ally, and the Australians have been terrific allies for many decades uh, to the American people. And you find out in the very last few days of his administration, the previous president, who has a very different view of things and whose party lost, did a last-minute deal on the side that now you have to abide by. I can see why that would be frustrating. And again, when it comes to how hot this conversation really was, there are once again conflicting accounts of that. And it seems like sometimes the worst things that are reported about Trump, after we find out more details and get more context, people walk back those reports. So I'm keeping an open mind on this one. I should say that we ought to be diplomatic, especially when dealing with some of our closest allies, including the Australians. But I can understand why Trump would want to talk tough at the very least and voice his displeasure about something over which he had no control. That happened after the election, though. And Kevin, as we heard uh, at that national prayer breakfast this morning, the president saying, don't worry about it. He's having these tough phone calls with world leaders, <laughs> something he says he has to do. I want to move on to this, though, Kevin. Senate Republicans suspending committee rules to bypass another boycott by Democrats and approve Scott Pruitt's nomination uh, to head the EPA. Listen to this. Mr. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mr. Boozman? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Aye. Mr. Sanders? No. Mrs. Murray? Yes. Mrs. So, Mrs. so Pruitt's nomination passing on a roll call vote with no Democrats present, now advancing to the full Senate. Democrats so far boycotting votes for the no uh, nominees at the EPA, the Treasury, and Health and Human Services. Kevin, why not show up? Well, I think this is a dangerous precedent that the Republicans in the Senate are setting by breaking the rules uh, and forcing through these votes through the committee. Scott Pruitt, uh, who is the appointee for the EPA, uh, has sued the EPA 20 times uh, when asked in that committee hearing uh, if he supports any provision right, on clean energy, on clean air, on clean water. He said he doesn't support anything that the EPA uh, has been doing. So this is a dangerous, dangerous nominee to head the EPA. And I fully support Ranking Member Tom Carper uh, from my home state of Delaware uh, taking the, the committee members out of that in, right. in full protest. Right, I want to give a guy last word here because I, yeah. I go back to the question, just why not show up? Yeah, show up and vote no. You don't like the picks. You lost the election. Make your voice heard. Don't boycott. Mm -hmm. And I love this idea that it's so 
dangerous to ruffle Senate precedent by changing the rules or breaking the rules. Can we get Harry Reid on the line? <laughs> this is the guy who pioneered a lot of this stuff. The Democrats escalate, and then yeah. they go crazy when the same tactics are used against them. It's fair game. All right, Kevin, Guy, thanks to both of you for being here. Good to see you. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you.